Well, Alex, thank you for joining us. Um, why don't we start with just give me your name, your title, and responsibilities. Sure. My name is Alex Ho. I'm Executive Director of Marketing at American Greetings. And what, what does that entail? Uh, we have centralized marketing at American Greetings, so that is consumer acquisition, CRM, social media, and also uh, retail marketing and consumer promotions. So you're winning an Effie for um, the world's toughest job. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind that campaign. Well, as you can imagine, the greeting cards business does run seasonally, so Mother's Day is a very important holiday. And uh, we had a new online business called Card Store, which is taking greeting cards which consumers uh, find as one of the most meaningful connections and making it even more meaningful through personalization. The problem is only 50% of people send greeting cards to begin with and making something that's personal takes a little bit of extra effort. So we had to make the impetus to do that um, pretty strong. And so even though people love their mothers, even though they know that Mother's Day is a really important holiday, not everyone really understands how important that is. And we wanted to dimensionalize uh, the effort that mom has made so in in return you would make a similar effort in return to thank her There's a whole host of decisions that come into play launching a campaign. I'm curious Do you point to any one or two kind of pivotal decisions? In the case of card store and Mother's Day a lot of it was driven by the tactical situation that we were in we were being uh, Outspent by and large by a major competitor. We our budgets were actually less for this Mother's Day than the year before. And so a lot of it was born out of necessity in terms of how do we make the most out of the available dollars? How do we create and use earned and owned media to magnify the message? What was the most challenging aspects of making those, you know, making decisions like that? I think it's the, the biggest challenge is it's, a, it's an area that we had not really had a lot of experience in. Our social media team was just uh, formed about a year prior and uh, was just ramping up in terms of capabilities and skill sets. And so we were relying a lot on that to be part, a significant part of the campaign. Were there any leaps or um, uh, information gaps that you had as you were preparing to the campaign and the launch, and then maybe even post-launch? Cardstore.com is a new business and a new business model, personalized greeting cards, so much of it was unknown. We were actually creating our own the rule set and our, our own standards of what this category was about and in turn what kind of marketing we needed to do you know and, and what kind of consumer we were trying to reach. Uncertainties for a lot of marketers can be kind of paralyzing or people in general can be paralyzing. Mm -hmm. um, how did you work through that with you and yourself and your team? I think it requires a few things. Certainly support of senior management which we had. Certainly the resources both internally and externally with our ad agency needed to align with it and uh, as, as I said, we, we, we developed a new social media team. We had an ad agency who was truly expert in that area. And so, combine, and so making sure your resources are lined up with what you wanted to do is really important to predict success. Could we predict success or not? No. But in order to, uh, you know, in order to sort of give yourself confidence that this can work, you really need to make sure the right resources are there. So teamwork is important. How did you marshal that teamwork from all those different internal and external partners? Um, the culture within American Greetings already is one that's very collaborative and very team-based. And when we uh, looked for an ad agency, we looked for an agency with similar culture and, and sort of ways of doing things. And so the way we meshed and our agency partners were really uh, and, and continue to be just an extended uh, team uh, of our entire marketing team. And uh, there are very few lines in which we say something that they can hear and vice versa. So really collaboration across agency client within the within the company across uh, across functions is what really made this happen American greetings is by nature a creative company yes. uh, you're creating a creative product um, how do you make the decision or the trade-offs between um, going to external creative partners for your marketing versus in in-house resources sure our internal creatives are you know and tremendously valuable they design some of the best products in the world and they have had a lot to do with the development of our brands. Um, the type of creative you use for marketing communications is something that is a little bit different than what you would use for a greeting card. So um, similarly, just as every job has a level of specialization, the kind of creative you use for marketing communications and the way you address challenges are challenges that we don't necessarily run into when creating a greeting card product. And so what happens is 
every creative within our team, whether it's the external creative or internally, contribute what they do best to the overall effort, whether it's product, design aesthetic, overall look and feel of the brand, to this very specific ideas um, that solve marketing communication challenges. So we use an external agency specifically because the creative uh, skill sets there are very unique and ones that we need. So in the campaign, you're really focusing on this underappreciated mother or motherhood in its right. broader sense. Um, how'd you get there? How, how did that, what, what made you focus on that aspect? Yeah, and the, the idea that motherhood's really hard and you know, it's a really tough job, that, that's not a new idea. People have been saying some flavor of that for quite a while. The difference in this case is dimensionalizing in a way that is unexpected and people had really never thought of it in that light before. So the insight was really around not only is motherhood um, you know, really hard work, it is work. It is just as much work, valid work, as any other kind of job. And so by breaking it down and putting it in a new light around the, the amount of hours you put in, the, the amount of skill sets you need to have as a generalist, the same way somebody might interview somebody, made it sound like, uh, again, put it in the framework of a real job, which is something no one had ever thought of before. So very accepted idea, new lens to, to, to look at it and, it, and it set off a lot of light bulbs and clearly uh, made a lot of people interested. Well, it was an award-winning idea. Um, what, I'm curious, were there other ideas that um, were on the table as you were evaluating what to, what to go forward with with the card store? There were. Um, I, we believe we, were, we had three concepts on the table, and the other concepts were much more in line with um, what you might consider um, sort of greeting card standards in terms of uh, you know, really celebrating mom in a very positive light. And uh, nothing as, uh, none of the work would, uh, would I call uh, sort of trite or unimportant. They were all really good ideas. Uh, but I think based on our challenge of not having a lot of dollars, new brand, uh, a, a lot of the factors that sort of indicated you really needed to uh, think creatively to break through. And so the idea that we biased may, was not as traditional within the category as the other ideas were. But that level of breakthrough we felt was needed and it was such a strong idea in and of itself that it, we felt that that was the right way to go. So you highlight people that are interviewing for this job. Were they real or actors? Yes, we get asked that question quite a bit. Um, the interviewer was an actor, of course, okay. who's professionally trained, but every single respondent was a real person. They did not know when they were coming in for this video interview what was going to happen or what it was about. How did you go about recruiting them? Uh, we uh, used, um, we recruited using traditional market research uh, companies. Uh, they weren't through casting firms because this was uh, really set up as a research study, so to speak, around, around the job description. And so uh, it, again, wasn't through traditional channels. We also placed uh, wanted ads in many local newspapers that actually had the job listing there. So um, that was one uh, additional element of visibility. So winning an FE is really about marketing effectiveness. How would you define what that is? I think marketing effectiveness is really dependent on that's the specific goals you're trying to have within any campaign. Some of our campaigns are designed towards bottom line conversion, straight and simple. Some of them, like World's Toughest Job, uh, was a little bit more for awareness and for top of funnel approaches in which that would drive bottom of, funnel, bottom of the funnel efforts. And so I think marketing effectiveness is really based on what goals are we trying to set? Are they stretch goals, but achievable goals? And how are we doing along those lines? So stepping back from the campaign, let's talk a little bit about Alex. Um, what you you're successful? What fuels that for you? What fuels success to me? It's constant change. I love starting things. Uh, for much of my career, I was gravitating towards things that really were things that weren't quite well defined. And um, at American Greetings, again, with this business model of online uh, personalized greeting cards. That's one example in which American Greetings is trying a lot of new things, and that really energizes me. What brands do you follow? I'm curious. A lot of marketers yeah, were curious by yeah. nature, I think. Um, what do you follow? Very much so. And my, the brands I follow cross all kinds of categories. Certainly the brands that have already had a solid track record on branding, like Apple. I'm, and not only that, I'm just a, a tech geek. So I follow most of the technology brands. And I find that industry, again, fast moving and dynamic and changing. Uh, for 
the efforts that we are doing now, we take a lot of inspiration from Dove, for example, in terms of how they've used earned and owned media and in terms of building a brand. And that's the kind of space that we're in. So I also follow brands within consumer products who have uh, gone down a similar path or are doing it right now. So what would you describe as the biggest opportunity for marketing today? I think the biggest opportunity is, again, continuing to learn. There are many things happening in the marketplace today relative uh, you know, to media fragmentation. All of the issues that people have been talking about for years continue to be the case with the addition of new form factors, new technologies, and um, the idea that there aren't specific ways to shop and buy for things. So that uh, what's really important now, I think, is this idea of following the customer on a customer journey, whether they're a current customer or a future customer, and being ready with your marketing in conjunction with your product, in conjunction with everything else, to put the customer first and, and to be able to treat marketing in a much broader way than we have historically. As you look at the marketing landscape, are there challenges that um, you would caution marketers against or, or say that we've really got to work through this as a function? I think one of the biggest the biggest thing, one of the biggest challenges is expectations regarding measurement. So there's always going to be things, certainly on the more cutting edge media-wise, that, uh, that are not as measurable as what we may have been comfortable with before, certainly in established CPG type industries. And I think it's the, it's, it's, it's the, the challenge is the amount of testing that you do in a space that is measurable or is not measurable for learnings, and then figuring out when the right time it is to incorporate that into the mix and what level of risk you're willing to take. What would you predict for the future if you had your crystal ball in front of you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the future, nothing ever gets simpler. The future is more complex, but I believe that um, a company that can, again, market in, in, in line with consumers' behaviors and expectations, which is really what marketing has been forever, but in this new world in which technology and devices are um, interactive experiences that uh, the idea that we had of, around media conversions about multiple screens, it's not quite that. It's really every screen and every device and every touch point can be used for different things. Not, you know, your, your watch is not going to be only used for one specific purpose. It depends on the task. It depends on the need. So I think it's really understanding, again, within any given product or category, what the customer experience and the customer journey is, what our competitive advantages are, and be able to leverage that with a very tailor-made, prescriptive kind of uh, solution. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.